Good morning and welcome to service of the first Sunday of Advent. Um, let us take this time to prepare our hearts and minds for worship and listen to some pretty music. Again, welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Advent. We have a few announcements. Again, thank you for those who um, signed up to get gifts for our angel tree. And many of you have already returned them. My office is starting to overflow with gifts, so that is a great sign. Thank you. Um, and for those who have yet to return them, uh, we ask that they're back by next Sunday. Um, I will go through later this week and send out reminder emails if anyone is missing at that point yet. Um, also, the pledge cards uh, are asked to be back by next Monday, so we have one more Sunday to drop them off um, in the offering bowl uh, plates or bring them to the office. Um, and also, I see we have many kids today, which is great because today is our Advent event, which is not just for kids, it's intergenerational, so all are welcome after service down in the fellowship hall to join. And also, there are many ad different Advent uh, devotionals out by the office. Feel free to take uh, one or two or however many. There's even uh, Advent calendar as well but most importantly we have our advent devotional that has various uh, entries from people of our congregation and supplemented with different poems or writings and also some coloring and word searches so it can also be used as the as a family um, or even those young at heart who love to color i know i love to color so i hope you pick up one of the St. Paul devotionals and hopefully you find something in it, um, either just learning a little bit more about fellow congregants or just kind of take time to ponder this Advent season. Um, also, Christmas dinner sign-ups are in the back. If you have any questions, uh, track down Carl, who is not currently sitting here, but he's somewhere around here. I saw him. Track down Carl and ask your questions about the Christmas dinner. Uh, also, I saw today is the fair trade goodies. So all coffee, chocolate, hot cocoa, it's really good hot cocoa, is uh, on sale after service in the lounge. So before going downstairs, stop in the lounge, get your goodies, and then head downstairs. 
sounds like a great plan. Um, and also, are there any birthdays or anniversaries the past week or this coming week? Ah, so Christy, your birthday is coming up? Yeah, anniversary? Oh, last week, last week. Last week was your birthday? Well, happy, happy belated birthday, Christy. Birthday? Roberta's birthday was Tuesday. We have quite a few. Celebrated with bingo. Perfect. Cheryl? Birthday's today. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, and Amelia is, has turned one. Oh, that's always a fun birthday, too. Yay. Let's wish everybody happy birthday. And also, uh, on a different note, please keep uh, Alice and Diane and James in your prayers as um, they have recently had a loss in their family. And so ple please keep them in your prayers as they deal with their time of grief as well. Um, and with that... We do not have a temple talk today, so right now I'll invite my helper for the lighting of the candle, for the advent candle. And please join me in the litany of the advent candle. When I look around, I see shadows of hunger. So many neighbors nearby and around the world will go to bed hungry tonight. We'll wait, we'll wait a little bit. In the face of hunger, we light a candle of hope. Okay. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. Friends, be not afraid. God's hope is at hand. Let us sing the first verse of Light One Candle. Please stand as you are able. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in the words of the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with the creation's bounty. Look upon us with your mercy. Our hearts again to you. 
Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of your waiting world. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon all. Please be seated, and I ask the kids to come forward. How are you all this morning? Good. Well, Happy New Year. Does that seem weird to say right now? Why do you think I might be saying Happy New Year? Because it's almost New Year. I mean, that could be one reason. Is there any other reason you think I might be saying Happy New Year? It's almost Christmas. It's almost Chinese New Year. I don't remember that lands. That might be after Christmas. Still. You have an idea? <laughs> well, actually, in the church in the church calendar, it is a new year. So Advent, do you know this we have now started the season of Advent? Advent starts the new year. And I printed off some kind of a few pictures that show kind of, I'll, I'll hand them out so you all can kind of hold and share and look at them together. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Can you guys see different ones? So look at it kind of like a clock, and it starts at the beginning of that blue spot up there. So you see... So like, this is what they're looking at. It's like a big circle. And this is basically the church here. So we start up in the blue spot. Do you know what that say? What does that say? Four Sundays, which is four Sundays of Advent. Do you know what Advent is? What is Advent? It's like the first, the whole, like, first few weeks of the year. First few weeks till Christmas. Any other thoughts? Because that, that is true. Any other thoughts of what Advent is? Do you, do you know what Advent is, Callum? Yeah? Every year, we, like, see, I wear blue, and we put blue things up on the altar, and the blue thing hanging um, from the balcony that I think tall people probably would run into, because it seems pretty short for me, but, like, it's still pretty high up there for me. So Advent is kind of a time of preparing and waiting. Do you know what we're preparing for or waiting for? Christmas. And what's so special about Christmas? The day that Jesus was born. Perfect. So then do you see this little line coming off of Advent right before the 12 days, this white 12 days? It says birth of our Lord. So that would be Christmas, right? And then do you know what the next white section is that says 12 days. Do you know what that is? It might kind of give you a hint if you look at the white stuff just above it. So the Christmas season is the 12 days starting Christmas Day going the 12 days after. So I know a lot of people think that the 12 days of Christmas is before Christmas. It's really actually after Christmas. And that's a little pet peeve of mine. In case anyone wanted to know, it's a pet peeve of mine that people think after Christmas, the season's over, but it's not. We still have 12 days of it. So like the 12 days of Christmas song, perfect to sing, you know, for 12 days after Christmas. And then do you know what comes after Christmas or after the season of Christmas? Do you know what color it is? If we look at the green, yep. And then it's Epiphany. So we have, it depends on when Lent starts. It's like it says, it's four to eight weeks of Epiphany, depending on when we start Lent. So Epiphany, do you know what's special about Epiphany? Epiphany, the first the day of Epiphany is when we celebrate 
the wise men uh, meeting Jesus and bringing the gifts. So, like, epiphany means kind of like being aware, like ma- being made known, like you start to know. So the wise men learn about Jesus, meet Jesus. And then we have a whole season of epiphany of learning more about Jesus, learning more about Jesus' miracles and all that. What's the next season? What color is the next season? And do you know what that season is? Lent. Do you know what we do in Lent? Do you guys know? Do you remember what Lent is? What does Lent lead up to? New Year. Okay, New Year, New Year's happens during the 12 days of Christmas. I should have mentioned that. So New Year's, we have the New Year during 12 days of Christmas there. But what leads up to Lent? What, what's the big white section beyond, on the other, under the next side of Lent? Do you know? Usually we have lots of white things around. It's big celebration. I hear some help. Easter. So after Lent, we have Holy Week, and then after Holy Week, we have Easter. So, and then after Easter, we have a little tiny sliver of red there, which is Pentecost. Do you know what Pentecost is? This is like a crash course of the seasons of the church. Pentecost is when we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into the well, yeah, coming into the world and being made known in the world. So often we talk about how there's like flames, the disciples are talking in tongues, and everybody understands them, talking about Jesus. And then we have this giant section of what color? Green. Green, which basically takes us all the way through summer and most of fall. It's basically the season we just left. And that's just kind of called ordinary time. There's nothing remarkably special more than just the miracles or their stories that Jesus shared. And Thanksgiving, yeah, Thanksgiving falls into the green section. That is true. Yep. So, seems like a, it's a lot, isn't it? There's a lot in this, this church year. But as we start Advent, we work on preparing for what again? Do you know? Oh, all, all Saints Day. Yep, All Saints Day is near the end of the green time. It's a little white selection near the end of the green time. Yep. But then if we just go back to the, the blue part. So we started Advent. So we're starting. Do you see this red little words that says, the church year begins here? We can read it as, you are here. Like, you know those signs that tell you where you are, like in a mall or in a amusement park? So basically, this, the church year begins here. We are right there right now. And from there, we prepare for the coming of Christmas. And how do you guys prepare for Christmas? Putting up your Christmas tree. Putting up the ornaments on the Christmas tree. Or is there any other traditions you guys do to prepare for Christmas? Open presents or wrap, wrap presents so you can open them on Christmas. Okay. Putting up, putting up decorations in and around your house. Yeah. How do you, do you help out with getting ready for Christmas, Callum? You, you play with some snow. Uh, that's a good, that's a good way to get ready for Christmas when we have snow make snowman how do you get ready for christmas christmas as one wrap open presents well before you open presents what do you have to do order order presents oh is that is that what you said you said order presents oh i misheard you order the presents this kid knows how it works perfect <laughs> hang mistletoe <laughs> So, like, there's a lot of things we do to get ready for Christmas, isn't there? So, how do you, is there anything you do to kind of get ready to to celebrate Jesus' birthday, Jesus' birth? Basically, all you you just said is we celebrate the gifts, huh? 
Do you have a, you have something else to share, Cal? Uh, put lights on. Yeah, put up lights. Perfect. Well, and another thing that I'm sure you all are gonna be doing later today that we can work to help get ready for Christmas might be happening downstairs. What might that be? Do you know what we're doing downstairs? Crafts. We're making crafts, like probably Christmas crafts, right? Yeah. yeah. And also, I think there's going to be making st um, a few ornaments to be sent out to like homebound members as well. So like sharing the crafts too. Um, so you will soon be doing more Christmas preparing for Christmas, and that is awesome. And you have something else to share? Put up the balloons? Yeah. Oh, yeah, put, put up all the, the festive things. Well, let us pray, okay? Dear God, thank you for giving us the church year and teaching us all about the different seasons. And as we start Advent and prepare for Christmas, please be with us as we make our fun crafts and share those with our neighbors. Please be with us as we continue to learn more about you and the birth of Jesus and as we celebrate together all the fun of Christmas. In your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I hope you have fun in Sunday school, and I'll see you all downstairs later. I can take them if you don't want to keep, you know, the calendar of the church here. <gasps> okay. Please stand as you are able, and let us sing together the Kyrie printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The first reading is from the 64th chapter of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteousness deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and all our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace are from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as his branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, the commands of the doorkeeper to be on the watch. 
Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from our God, the Father, and the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Church New Year. Here we are at the beginning of Advent, the beginning of a new church year, and we hear some rather apocalyptic texts today. In Isaiah, we hear the prophet crying out for God to show up, to make God's self known throughout the world, and to do something to save them from all their suffering, seeming to believe that God had left them high and dry, had left them to their own devices, since the world looked rather bleak in the time of Isaiah. And then in the gospel for today, we hear Jesus telling about the events that will signify his foretold second coming, events that look like they could very well lead to the end of the earthly world. And it might seem like an odd choice for Advent as we are beginning to prepare and wait for the celebration of the birth of the Messiah, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. At least this year, this apocalyptic language and commands to keep awake and alert don't seem quite as jarring compared to other years. Since this past month or so, we've had similar passages in Matthew. But this is not always the case based on our lectionary rotation. But why then, as we prepare for celebrating the beginning of Jesus' time on earth through the incarnation as both fully human and fully divine, why do we look ahead to the end of earthly time? German theologian Karl Rahner wrote in his book, Everyday Faith, it is strange that the gospel read at the beginning of the time of preparation for Christmas is that of the end of the whole history of the world. Yet that, it, yet that is not really surprising. For what is afoot in a small beginning is best recognized by the magnitude of its end. What was really meant and actually happened by the coming, the advent of the Redeemer is best gathered from the completion of his coming, which we rather misleadingly call the second coming. For in reality, it is the fulfillment of his one coming, which is still in progress at the present time. We are living in a time when this fulfillment of God's promises made through Jesus' life has not yet been realized throughout all of creation and we are still waiting, still longing, still crying out, still praying to God to deliver us and others and the whole world from our sufferings, the wars, and the terrors throughout the world. So as we start our Advent preparations this week, looking forward not necessarily to the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, but to the end, when the full reality of his and God's act of love for all humanity in creation through his death and resurrection will be fulfilled for all of the world, where all will one day be reconciled with each other, where war and suffering throughout the world will finally come to an end. And in a nutshell, that is what this, the prophet Isaiah was crying out for when he had hoped that God would soon make this the reality that he hoped for with the prophesied future coming of the Messiah. But as we know, God works in mysterious ways and in ways that don't always look like our prayers have been answered, or at least not in the ways or the time frame we had expect and hoped for. In Mark's gospel today, we hear Jesus give hints of when this long hoped for reality may finally become just that become our reality, 
through various signs that we can point to, like the falling of the stars, the darkened sun and moon, and so on. But even though he mentioned these events to look for as signs that his return will happen soon, he again gave the reminder that it will happen in an unexpected time and way and calls for us to keep awake and stay alert because we do not know when the Lord will return. He gave various examples of time throughout the day, like at evening, at midnight, cock crow, or dawn, when he could return unexpectedly. And I have got to say that after my internship year, when I lived on a parishioner's hobby farm just outside of Mount Horb, Wisconsin, with more than 40 chickens and a few roosters, I have grown a whole new appreciation and awareness of the statements throughout the Bible involving, involving the time that roosters crow. Throughout that year, I've learned that roosters like, not, like to not only crow in the early mornings, but almost at any time throughout the day, as long as there was natural light. And it could get rather annoying at times, if I'm honest. But it's really served to help me understand just how unpredictable they can crow throughout the day, and thus how unpredictable Jesus' return will be. That it can happen truly at any time. So Jesus' return will be rather unpredictable, and yet we are commanded to keep awake and alert to be prepared for whenever his return might be. But how are we to be able to stay awake and alert? How are we preparing for his return and the foretold end of times that it is said to entail? We can't possibly stay awake and alert forever, even when we are not talking literally, staying awake, of not sleeping. But how are we able to stay awake to all that's around us? How are we to stay awake and alert to not just our own suffering, but to the suffering of those around us and those throughout the world? It sounds as if we are to be in a state of alertness, a state similar to the fight or flight response consistently in order to be able to respond in a moment's notice. But as I am sure many of you know, no one can stay in the fight, flight, or even freeze response forever. Our bodies and minds are not made to withstand that kind of prolonged response with all the stress and anxiety that it entails. We all would burn out at the very end, at the very least. So how are we to stay awake and keep alert? This is where we must rely on each other on our community and the community of the whole world. God made us a com as communal beings to be in relationship with each other and with God. And it is within these community relationships that we are called to take care of creation, including to take care and look out for each other with our various jobs, gifts, and talents. Much like the community of the household servants who were tasked to care for the household while the master is away in today's gospel. This looking out for each other while continuing to prepare, continuing to wait, continuing to cry out and pray to God to save us from our pain and suffering of this world is the work of the community together. We are called to help each other to keep awake and keep alert to bear the load a bit while another may need to rest, or to let others bear the load when we ourselves might need to rest from our own pains and sufferings, and to continue to feel the hope that comes from the certainty that God, through Jesus, will one day deliver us all from the pains of this world. As we continue through our Advent journey, looking ahead to win the long prayed and hoped for reality of ours and all creation's deliverance from the sins 
and sufferings of the world. Know that even though, like in Isaiah, it may feel like God has abandoned us in our grief, pain, and suffering, know that God is there with you still. Making God's self known through and in unexpected ways, We know God is a God of the unexpected, like sending the Son, Jesus, to be born a baby to a relative relative nobody of Mary. Through the unexpected, may you find the hope of the promised future when all pain, grief, sorrow, and suffering will finally come to an end. And as we continue to wait and pray to God, come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Amen. You may stay seated as we sing our hymn of the day as printed in the bulletin. Please stand as you are able, and let us join our voices in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With hope and exp- expectation, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Call your church into holy fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Re-energize your faithful people to live with hope and compassion, especially those who serve as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. All creation signals your presence, O God, the vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, and living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the nations tremble at your holy presence. 
that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict. Teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems. And bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief, especially Dan, Renee, Lois, Kevin, Jackie, Earl, Vern, Dia, Barb, Roberta, Mary, Blake, Barb, Carla, Jordan, Nakia, Deb, Tricia, Jack, Mary Kay, Rosemary, James, Julie, Gus, family of James and Diana Mooseman. For the homebound, Jean, Fern, Barb, Janet, Mark, and Pat. Deliver all in any need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with those who keep awake at night. Nurses working overnight shifts, caregivers of newborns and aging adults, stargazers, those who are anxious or those who are traveling. Reveal to all that the dark can be a place of calm and comfort, filled with your presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and place, calling them into one fellowship of saints. Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore with us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share signs of peace.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Lord be with you. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed. 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated, and just a word of reminder, please come up the side aisles and either grab a pre-filled cup with grape juice or an empty cup to be filled with wine. All are welcome at the Lord's table.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And just before I get to the blessing, I realized I forgot to make an announcement about the poinsettias. Uh, there was an oversight. It did not get in the epistle. So if you wish to uh, purchase poinsettias for a Christmas uh, Eve service to be up here in honor of anyone, please get the orders in by this Thursday. Sorry for the, the late notice on that. Um, but you should be find your, the flyer within your bulletin. And with that, please receive this blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, number 242.